but first this morning we are having showers because we stink <laughs> so after all that it started raining again i got the camera underneath my waterproof jacket hi everyone and welcome to our channel we are Hannah and Johnny, also known as Finding Our Adventure. In 2020, we converted our Ford Transit to live in full time. Since then, we've been on an endless adventure with our two cats, Tia and Skye, exploring, living and working in our tiny home. Join us each week for a new episode of Finding Our Adventure. Good morning everybody. We had a really nice peaceful night's sleep on our park up next to Bamborough Castle last night overwatching, overlooking the beach and we've actually found it really easy along this coastline to find really nice coastal park ups along the beach which is really unusual for England because normally it's really difficult especially in coastal areas so we've just had an amazing time and we've woken to this beautiful day, beautiful blue skies, lovely warm sun and we've come across to Holy Island and we've got to wait a couple of hours because the causeway to get onto the island that you drive on is tidal and it's completely flooded at the moment it looks so cool and there's signs everywhere warning people to check the tidal times because there's loads of photos online and stuff of people getting caught out and the vehicles literally getting flooded by the ocean and there's also towers along the causeway so if you're walking along there you can literally walk up a tower and avoid the flood if you get caught out so it looks really cool and we can't wait to get across and I'm gonna get a drone out and have some shots above and we're just gonna have a really nice chill day I think. We have made it to Holy Island after a long wait. We were basically waiting for the tide to go out and some impatient people made their way through and the water looked, still looked really deep. So we didn't want to risk that. So we didn't want to get salt water all over the van. But we have now made it. It's about two o'clock, I think. We're just parked up in the car park and the weather today is absolutely beautiful. We've got a bit of sand popping out and we are on our way to the castle here on the island. Um, it's got a really interesting history and uh, we're gonna show you around and see what we learn. So behind me is Lindisfarne Castle and it was built back in 1550, I think, um, to stop Scottish invasions. So we're gonna go up to it now and have a look. And it's built on a volcanic rock. And it, yeah, it's built on a big amount of volcanic rock. So the castle is owned by National Trust and unfortunately it's been closed since 2017 because they've had to do lots of restoration work on it. Um, there's also been a recent addition on the castle where they've rendered one of the walls to try and help stop the erosion from rainfall. And one of the things that they've included in the render is yak hair, which is very interesting. We've just made it back to the van after having a really nice afternoon exploring the island and the sun is just setting now and we've got to get off before the tide comes back in. <laughs> yeah, so we're on a rush to get off the island but it's been so nice, we've seen so much wildlife here and the castle is really spectacular so if you are planning to come here 
we definitely recommend it. Just remember to check the tide times. Yeah, don't get stuck. <laughs> We have finally made it to the mighty Kilda Forest and we are very excited to be here. We've been crossing past the Scottish and English border all morning with beautiful sunshine and we finally made it to the forest. Yeah, we're going on a little walk this morning to a waterfall through some gorges and really excited just to get out into nature again. It's been raining the last couple of days and we've kind of just been taking shelter. So yeah, it's really nice to be outside and feel the sun on your face. Yeah, it's very calm and very peaceful this morning. And there's a big ball just behind us that we said hi to. So <laughs> let's head on and go find some waterfalls. Kilda Forest. It's part of the Northumberland National Park. And as far as we're aware, it actually started life as a working forest and it still is a working forest. So it was just a big plantation. And I think what's happened is Lots of wildlife has taken root here and everything and there's lots of animals, the trees have done really well and a lot of it has been left now to nature and it's become a huge forest and it's done really well for itself. So as we go along we'll figure more things out and get more facts together to be able to let you guys know. Kilda Forest is also the largest forest in England and the second largest in the UK and um, I think the one in Dumfries in Scotland is the biggest and the third biggest is the New Forest in England. And if you haven't seen our video of the New Forest, click the link above here and you can go watch that because that's a beautiful area to go visit. But this is our first time in Kilda Forest and we're so excited to be here. It feels like we've only been walking for a couple of minutes and we're already surrounded by thick forest and vegetation, which is really cool. Got all these like pine trees encroaching onto the path here and it's so magical so far. There's moss as well, it's like a carpet of moss. It just feels so wild here. So it looks like there's a lot of work going on in the forest, I think. Or maybe some of the trees have fallen down behind us, but it means that some of the paths are closed. But I think we can still get to the waterfall. It's just over that way. And this is a really, really easy walk. It's only taken us maybe like 15 minutes, maybe total. And it's like a really easy walk as well. There's not much up or down. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend it if you're in this area. We're just like, just before the Forest Kilda Drive starts. Um, and this waterfall is called Pine Hope Falls, I think, or Pine Hope Lynn, I think. I don't know if I'm saying that right. But um, it's a much lesser known waterfall in um, the Northumberland area. So. There's lots of other waterfalls as well, which we're hoping to get to in the next couple of days. Um, but this is our first one. We've just come back up from the waterfall and it's so peaceful here. The sun is shining through the trees. It's really nice. It's after midday now and we only have a few more hours of daylight left because obviously at this time of year, the sun sets very early. And also we got the news this morning that Hannah's sister has just given birth this morning. So we're not sure how much time we have here because Hannah is a little bit desperate to go see the baby. Yeah, I'm really, really excited to see the baby. I was just like, when Johnny woke me up, he was like, I think some think something's happened I was like what and I was like really excited to see it so yeah we've been waiting for the news to come um for a while now and uh yeah just really 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 want to see the new little baby okay so change of plans we can't get to the other waterfall because the road's closed like the other trails were so what we're going to do is instead because the weather's nice today is we're going to drive the Kilda Forest Toll Road which is the forest road and we think it's about 10 miles or so in length. It's quite long. It's a gravel track. And it does say recommended for four by fours, but other vehicles, if they're careful, can get across as well. So we're gonna to attempt to do it. And then on the other side is the reservoir, which is the largest yeah. man-made body of water in England. Mm -hmm. And then um, I think that's where we can park for tonight. Yeah, that's the plan. So hopefully <laughs> we make it across the road. Yep. And I'm sure we'll want to stop loads and take pictures because it's supposed to be really beautiful. Yeah, so fingers crossed we make it before um, sunset. We've made it onto the forest road and it's basically right next to the car park we were in and it costs three pounds because it's a toll road and um, I think there are bits of it that are going to be a bit more gravelly but so far we're on tarmac and it looks very nice. What's that? I think this is gravel. Oh, we are, apparently this is gravel. Very hard packed ground. So it looks very nice.
you want to leave this place where we grew up this old town just put it all behind remember you and i would always find somewhere to hide when we were kids so we could see and hear the water run river's gonna cry when you're gone So we've been on the road for about an hour so far. We've done, we've done lots of stops. We've got the drone up. We've taken lots of photos. And the road's actually all right. It's not that bumpy. Um, so you're able to do a pretty decent speed, but we're going so slow because we're taking lots of photos and things. And we're not even halfway yet. We're only like probably a couple of miles into it. And we've got about nine miles to go. So we're going to get cracking now. There's a halfway viewpoint we think there is at some point. So we're going to get there as well. And the weather has been all sorts since we've been on. We've had sun, we've had cloud, we've had um, rain as well. So it's been a real adventure. So guys, we have just finished the forest drive. It was absolutely beautiful. The van's a little bit dirty and I think that's the dirtiest it's ever been. And we have now arrived in the car park at the end of the forest drive. And you can actually overnight camp here, which is really cool. It's got loads of camping spots. And so we're gonna go figure out what we have to pay for that. And then we're gonna put some lunch on and probably get ready for the evening. Good morning everybody. This is actually attempt number two at our walk this morning. We did get out on the trails but it started chucking it down so everything got very wet. We've been back to the van, dried off and um, yeah now the bit of blue sky above us so it's looking a little bit better and we had some more good news this morning. We did have some very good news this morning. Baby number two has arrived so my sister-in-law Molly gave birth this morning and uh, we've seen some pictures of him and he looks really cute so yeah it's crazy two babies in two days which is really exciting and i can't wait to go see him last night we had a beautiful park up overlooking kilda water and we had it all to ourselves which was really nice it was very dark very quiet and then this morning we got up nice and early to drive to another little car park and We've literally seen one of the couple this morning, so it's very quiet at this time of year. The forest is very quiet. We actually haven't really seen much wildlife either. I think the rain may have put all the animals off a little bit, <laughs> but we'll see what we can spot today, because hopefully we might even see red squirrels. So one thing I've been really enjoying on this walk so far has been all the really nice colors. Like all the ferns have gone like a really nice golden burnt, like orange color. And one of my favorite things that I that they've got a few of around here. I think they're called larches. They're basically like, they look like pine trees, but they turn this beautiful yellow color. You can see some in the, in the distance. So maybe I could persuade Johnny to get his drone up and get some nice shots of them. River's gonna cry when you're gone, 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 gone. River's gonna cry when you're gone, gone. So after all that, it started raining again. I got the camera underneath my waterproof jacket and we're following a sign to the wave chamber because we're curious as to what it is because we have no idea. So let's go check it out. Okay, so we found the wave chamber, chamber and it's really cool. Oh, <laughs> I keep slipping over these um, slippery roots. Look at this. You can go inside it and listen to the waves. Apparently it echoes the sound of the music, uh, sound of the music, sound of the water. So let's have a look. It doesn't really work. Oh. It's also supposed to reflect the light onto this bit in the middle. Oh, it's very dark. So there's one entry and one exit. Can you hear the water? I can hear the water, but it's supposed to, there's a mirror at the top and it's supposed to reflect the light down, but I don't think it's sunny enough today. Maybe on a really bright day. I bet on a sunny day that probably works really well, but it's a bit gloomy today. Yeah, it works. And I love 
how you're so coordinated with all the co autumn colours today. Yeah, I'm in camouflage. Very nice. So I think we're going to go back to the van now and put the heater on to dry everything off and have some lunch. You can really smell the pine here in the forest. It, the floor is absolutely covered in pine needles and just everywhere you look, pine trees. So cool, it's quite um, dense this part and there's lots of little baby Christmas trees as well. It's definitely getting me excited for Christmas. Okay, so we're back in the van from our nice walk and we've just seen loads of rainbows. It's been really pretty. The sun's come out inevitably, obviously when we're back in the van. And now we are on our way to get um, some food because our fridge stock is running a bit low. So we're gonna go grab some bits from there and we found another park up for tonight. So I think we will pick you up tomorrow for our, I think it will be our final adventure here in Northumberland. Good morning everybody! So today we are off on a very exciting adventure which we will show you later on but first this morning we are having showers because we stink <laughs> and we are um, looking forward to that this morning so I'm just boiling up the kettle um, and we've got our bucket which is where we put all of our water for our shower and if you haven't seen it already we've got like this little thing here that's like basically a pump so you can do it, use it outside and inside, so it's very easy to use. But yeah, it's been raining all morning, so we've been waiting for the sun to come out. Looks like it's going to be good for us, so it might be a bit muddy under our feet, but definitely going to go make the most of today. Okay, so we are nice and fresh from our showers in the van, which was really nice, and we're ready to tackle Hadrian's Wall. And I did plenty of research last night to give you lots of facts as we go along the wall. Yeah, you won't be bored. No, not that I can remember <laughs> them all, but there's quite a few. And um, it's just really amazing learning about it, and it's going to be really cool to go see it today. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, it was really cool yesterday because we actually drove past it, and we didn't realise at the time. And then when we were following this military road, just like all the way, which must have been the old road, um, just following the wall, which was really cool. And we also passed Sycamore Gap, which is where we're heading to now. Also, I'm going to apologise in advance because it is quite windy today, so if the sound is a bit bad, then that's that's why there's a lot of wind around. But um, the sun is out, there's some blue skies, the rain has now passed, which is really nice, and we're excited to go explore. Go on, give us a good fact. Okay, so we've just made it to Hadrian's Wall, and it's time for some facts. <laughs> so what I was learning yesterday is the Emperor Hadrian was the one who commissioned it when he visited Britain at the time and this was the northern frontier of the Roman Empire at the time and basically they just decided that this was far north there's lots of um, different tribes and stuff and um, groups further north that they were fighting and they just decided to build a wall here nobody really understands why like the theory is it's obviously to keep the the people from the north out but actually they think it might have just be a vanity project it's over 2,000 years old um, and it was, the, it was it predates um, the Great Wall of China and it stretches right across the north of England from coast to coast and I think it's 73 miles long and it started in Newcastle and every Roman mile they have a castle on the wall as well and also it is 10 Roman feet thick and 14 Roman feet high and um, yeah, I can't remember any of the facts. That's pretty impressive. That's that's more than one fact there. So <laughs> we'll save the rest of the facts for later. <laughs> okay, so while we're walking to the next section, I've got another fact for you. Unlike the Great Wall of China, which was built by slaves, Hadrian's Wall was actually built by the Roman soldiers themselves, and they took great pride in it that they, um, the Roman legions that built certain sections, they engraved um, on stones the bits that they built so they could leave it as a, so people could see who built it and which bits were built by which legions, which I think is pretty cool and apparently the soldiers were very skilled engineers. Okay, an often misunderstood about Hadrian's War is that people think it is the border between England and Scotland, which is actually not. The current day border is actually quite a bit north from here, past Kilda Forest. Well, it's basically on the north of Kilda Forest where we were the other day. And this is actually just slap bang in the middle of um, English countryside now. So which way is Scotland? Scotland's over there. And we're in England. And we're in England, we're in Northumberland. 
Hadrian's Wall wasn't actually the only wall they built. Um, there was actually another wall further north into Scotland that they, um, the Romans built after Hadrian's Wall, but that was only occupied and um, manned for about six years until they pulled back um, to Hadrian's Wall. And Hadrian's Wall actually only took six years to build, which is pretty incredible. And um, yeah, I can't imagine building a wall like that on the train that they are here. But they quarried all the stone locally as well. So on certain bits of the, um, the rocks and stuff, you can actually see where they use their um, stone cutter tools and things like that. So you can see all of the history as you're walking along. Yeah. For the Roman soldiers posted here to the most northern frontier at the north of England, which was very cold compared to the Mediterranean where they'd come from, they actually, in some of the castles, um, like other Roman sites around Britain and in Rome, they actually had underfloor heating. So the floors of the, the homes and stuff that they would stay in, all the baths and places like that, they actually had a raised floor and then they had um, fire heat being pumped under the floors and coming up through vents in the walls and stuff to make it a little bit more comfortable for them because I don't particularly like the cold and probably coming from a much warmer climate, it'd probably feel horrible being stationed here almost 2000 years ago. We are almost at Sycamore Gap now, which is the main bit we want to get to. And the final fact I've got for you before we get there is that Hadrian's War was manned by Roman soldiers for just over 300 years, which is a huge amount of time. But if you've got any more facts and knowledge of history about Hadrian's War, leave them in the comments below because we'd love to know more about it. We've made it to Sycamore Gap, which is basically this little dip in between the two hills and it's famous for this tree in the middle which creates a really nice um, photograph basically. So it's one of the most photographed trees in the whole of the UK and it's also been on lots of films like um, Robin Hood, Robin Hood yeah, and a few others that I don't know of but pretty cool. I could be totally wrong about this but I imagine the tree is actually much newer than the wall. The wall is obviously over 2,000 years old and the tree is probably a few hundred years old. I mean, as I said, I could be totally wrong, but the, wall, the tree was, probably wasn't here when the wall was built. But my earliest memory, as Hannah said, is from Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, near the beginning of the film where Robin Hood is actually climbing on the wall and he's walking around the tree. So didn't know at the time then, but that's Sycamore Gap in that film. And yeah, it's really cool to come and see it now, but we're just making our way down the stairs because it's very slippery and very muddy and we try not to fall down. We just got back from our walk along Hadrian's Wall and we got caught in another rainstorm and we got absolutely soaked so we're just going to get changed, put some dry clothing on and then we think there's a really nice cafe restaurant down the road that has like a big glass wall at the viewpoint of the wall so we're going to go check that out but in total we walked about seven kilometres along the wall so it was a really nice walk but the wind was really strong on the way back so we put all the cameras away and we were just battling the wind to get back but yeah, really nice morning so far and we're going to go check out the cafe now. So we have taken refuge from the weather and we're at the Sill which is basically like a museum but it's also got like a cafe and a shop so we have treated ourselves to a nice hot chocolate and also like a rice crispy chocolate thing so yum So we've just left the campsite this morning where we basically did all of our van chores which was really really good for us because our next stop is going to see the babies. So I'm really excited about that and meeting our new nephews. And we that is gonna be the end of this episode. So I hope you enjoyed it, uh, exploring with us around Northumberland. We really, really enjoyed it and we would definitely recommend it if you've not visited already. And please subscribe if you haven't already. It means a lot to us and you will then be able to see when our other adventures come out and our other videos. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and let us know in the comments what your favourite bit of this video was. Thank you so much for all the support and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!